In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Today we're looking at Luke chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. He who hears you hears me. He who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. There's so much going on in this beautiful passage. First of all, the Lord says and warns and almost laments these cities who have not repented, although he had done mighty works in them. And when I think of mighty works, I often think of things that are visible to the whole world and obvious to the whole world. Uh, When I think of mighty works that were done, uh, I can't help but remember and, and, and hear my mom telling me the story over and over of how Saint Mary appeared in on top of a church in Zaytun uh, in 1968 and 1969. That's right, for two years, um, you know, Saint Mary was appearing on top of a church in Egypt in Zaytun, Cairo. That's right, for two years. Now, some of you may have heard about this, but I'm guessing that the majority have not heard. And yet here was this, you know, spiritual, uh, uh, you know, manifestation, this reality of uh, a saint appearing on top of a church in front of millions for two years straight. I mean, if you Google it, you can just Google Zaytun, Z-E-I-T-O-U-N, and then apparition. And you'll see pictures, pictures of St. Mary, pictures of her uh, um, and my mom herself, you know, saw her uh, uh, seven times in her own, you know, lifetime. She said that there was millions of people in the street. That before every apparition, uh, or almost every apparition, there'd be these doves of fire that would appear. Uh, the church was actually chained and locked down, and then uh, and and empty, obviously, and. Uh, um, you know, all of a sudden, before her apparition, all the lights in the church would go on and there'd be incense and you'd hear, you know, you know, she would say that there, you could hear people inside the church singing hymns of praise and then she'd appear. Now, this happened not once, not seen by, you know, a little girl or not seen by a few people. This was seen by millions and not just a scene, but People came from Europe to see her. People came from all around the world. You could take pictures of this apparition, this mighty work. And the Lord says that had this been done in another city, you know, they would have repented. uh, If the mighty works that were done in this city, you know, they would have repented. The reality is that she appeared in front of the whole world. And you'd, you'd think that if people saw this apparition, then people would just convert and change their lives and so on. The reality is that that repentance comes from the heart when it's ready. And though mighty works may be done, though someone may be raised from the dead, people still don't necessarily change or turn and repent to, to, and return to God. So the reality is, the, there are mighty works that are still happening in, in, in every day. But do we turn our hearts to the Lord? So the second thing he talks about is sackcloth and ashes. Now sackcloth is like, uh, like a, a, it, was, it was a black goat's hair. And people used to dress in, in that... Uh, you know, hair and fur to make themselves uncomfortable. They sit down in the dust and then 
they would sit in ashes and pour ashes on top of themselves and the ashes are there to symbolize ruin to symbolize destruction and that to remember that they themselves were in ruin and and people would mourn and weep and lament dressed in sackcloth as a sign of repentance now the key here is that they went out and got goat's hair and got dressed in it and put you know ashes on top of their heads and they sat in ashes this was not repentance was not an idea was not a thought was not a cognitive experience but rather that the the people who repented in this way actually repented in action you know their repentance meant discomfort for them people who sat in sackcloth were not comfortable and that was the point is that that they wanted to cause themselves discomfort they wanted to cause themselves you know a sense of suffering and and uh, all this was because they had decided that they had uh, recognized their sinfulness and they were turning to god and saying god be merciful to us we are in ruins we are in hades we are suffering without you our life can no longer function and and we are in complete discomfort in this day and age we need a modern version of sackcloth we need to be made uncomfortable in our repentance we need to turn to God and, and declare our ruin, uh, not just from a kind of cognitive, you know, uh, brain activity, but rather, you know, our repentance needs to be active and real. Finally, the last thing that that, that really catches uh, my attention is when he talks about, you know, Capernaum, he says that Capernaum is exalted. Uh, to the heavens almost in delusion he it's it you know the the imagination of the proud and here he says to capernaum that you will be cast down to hades now anyone who repents anyone who comes to god comes with you know and stands in the light of god will realize that they are already in hades that they are already lost and in ruins without him and and so they cry out in repentance and ask for mercy the key is that those who refuse to repent or reject the mighty works are those who live in delusion who live in the imagination uh, of their pride and the lord tells his disciples listen you know you yourselves be humbled you know recognize that you are in hades without me but then he balances that by saying to his disciples if someone rejects you they reject me if anyone accepts you they accept they accept me so so not not um you know it's not a, 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 a one of those things where you realize you're your fallenness and you realize how small you are and you realize that you are in hades without god and you're repenting but the moment that you do repent and turn to him is the moment that you realize that he's there in hades with you he is so uh united himself with you that he says that whatever happens to you happens to me and this is the mystery of God's humility. This is the mystery and the beauty of his humility is that, that he invites us to, to the lowest place to recognize our brokenness, to recognize our sinfulness, to repent in sackcloth and ashes, to go to the lowest place, to not be like Capernaum and exalted, only to find out that he is right there with us. I dare say even beneath us because he carries us he is the one who has gone to the lowest place no human can join him in his real and true humility and so there 
at the lowest place, we are one with him. If anyone rejects us, they reject him. And not just him. When they reject him, they reject him, uh, the one who sent him to us. So this beautiful union that he invites us to can only be found in the depths of humility. May today be a day of real repentance, a day where we put on sackcloth and ashes and sit in ashes and become uncomfortable with sin and express that discomfort through, you know, uh, through a real physical transformation. May we give up the comforts of this life to remember our need for repentance. May we sit in, in the ashes of our ruins. May we remember that we actually are in Hades without him. And yet, when we, when we humble ourselves to our true state, that is where we will find him. May today be filled with that union and that awareness of being so close to him. Have a beautiful day.